Chapter 11. <clears throat> Immigration. So we talked about the national policy in previous chapters. Okay. The national policy talked about um, targeting immigrations. Now, they talk, targeted Americans for their English. They talked about um, British because they were British. And they talked about Eastern Europeans. Okay. <clears throat> there were a whole bunch of other people that came over as well. Um, in about 1880, it really started to explode upwards. Okay. So Clifford Sifton was the one that kind of headed the national policy. He made posters and pamphlets because obviously there's no TV. There's no, so you would just put up posters all around town. You walking down the street and you would go down and you would see this poster in, you, in Ukraine and in the Ukraine. And it would be about free land if you got your way to Canada. Okay. Um, the, the government brought foreign journalists to Canada. They toured the country. They wrote newspaper stories about it when they returned home. Can you open the door? Government spent, sent speakers around the world. They spread their word about the great Canadian West and how beautiful it was and how amazing it was. Now, do you think they took them to the West or they just took them West of Toronto? West of Toronto. West of Toronto, where it was already settled and was already beautiful. Do you think they brought them around in like February, end of January? No, they brought them around in like July. Like, oh my God, it's beautiful out. It's so nice. Woo. Okay. So the government targeted the United States Great Britain, Eastern European. Again, Eastern Europeans, not as smart as the Western Europeans. But man, will they work, okay? They will work their butt off and they're good farmers. So while they're not the highest class of citizen that we want, they're better than the people from Africa, they're better than people from Asia, okay? Because they're still white, okay? A lot of racism, yes. If you go to 248, these are the posters that they would pick. Remember how I tell you guys that uh, less is more? How many words on these posters on, on the one on the left? Not a lot, right? Canada West, the last best West. Because everywhere else was being settled, right? <clears throat> a beautiful picture and use the picture to sell. Instead of making your PowerPoint 7,000 words, put a couple pictures that will show the... What, what you're talking about, okay? That's what they're doing on posters. They've got three really nice pictures here. Western Canada, the new, uh, the new Colorado. That was probably for the state. Yeah. You know, the new Colorado doesn't seem like a very good slogan for, uh, you know, the Ukraine, right? Not a lot of people are like, oh my God, the new Colorado. Yeah. El Dorado, sure. Like new land. Colorado at that time was like, Okay, even new El Dorado. I don't think that's going to fly in Poland. Okay, You're probably not going to trade. Uh, it's not going to um, translate well when you go over there. So um, it talks about betrayal of the promise of confederation because the French and the English were going to be equal, right? That's what we always promised in confederation. Nick, if you're going to do that, get out. Okay, if you can't listen, if you can't do this, go spend time on your own. Okay, you're going to start distracting Carl. Now this is, by the way, recording, so this will go up on YouTube. So, um, Sifton and the government most wanted new citizens who either spoke English or would learn it. The French would not learn it, okay? So those people from Quebec found out about all this free land and they wanted in on it, correct? You'd think that, oh my God, free land, we have no land here. I'm working off this stupid seniorial system still where I have to pay rent, do all this stuff. It's less so, but it's still there, still renting land. It's tough, tough to find good land. So they move out west. So a whole bunch of people start moving out west. The land out here is beautiful, but garbage. Okay? There are giant, giant, giant rocks that you have to dig out of the ground. If you've ever dug a rock out of the ground using a spade, it's a pain in the butt. Okay? A spade like a shovel. Even if you break it up with a pickaxe, even if you've got your ox and you're trying to pull it out, it's a pain in the butt. You get trees, one tree, and those roots go everywhere. Okay, so you have to dig out the roots. You have to go like six, like I think it's like three or four feet down. Okay, so those roots, because when you, when you dig into the ground, you want that topsoil to be nice and fresh. You don't want roots all over the place because it's going to make your, uh, all that stuff. So it was called a trap, okay? It's cold as crap here. 
Yes? It's a trap. <laughs> okay. Um, it would get so there were the uh, on much of the prairies there were few trees, so most of the newcomers made sod houses, so dirt dirt houses, um, made of slabs of soil, grass, and grass roots cut from the prairies. After a downpour, it would continue to rain inside for days. Only later, when they had more money and time, did homesteaders build more permanent wood frame houses. Okay, there's a lot of trees up north. But all the trees you see around Canada, or sorry, Calgary, like the south, are all planted there. And then they started to go from there. It was actually all just grassland. Okay? Grass grass prairies. Um, <laughs> push and pull factor, factors. You guys know what a push and pull factor was? Yeah. A push factor pushes you away from your country. Okay? So, a push factor would be in Europe, like population growth. If there's way too many people in Europe, you're going to want to leave Europe, okay? Religious persecution. Persecution means you're getting persecuted, like um, arrested or discriminated against or whatever, okay? You, there, life is bad because of what you've chosen, okay? Political persecution. There were natural disasters, and it's cheap. It's cheap to leave, Okay, there's pull factors as well as in free land, the promise of jobs, completed railway, better machinery, improved farming techniques. You're no longer taking seeds and just tossing them across the, the land and seeing what sticks. They know that you push it deep into the ground, you cover it up, give it a little bit of water, you walk four steps. It's a little slower, but your, your success is way better. You don't have to buy as much seed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Growing demand for wheat, um, there's religious and political freedom, and then there's friends and family that are in Canada, okay? So this diagram right here, this one here, push and pull factors in homeland, push factors in homeland, pull factors in Canada. Understand? There's chances are a very good chance there will be a test question on that. Okay. Churches and immigration. So instead of just targeting Americans, British um, and Eastern Europeans, they started to look for people that were being persecuted and wanted their free land like the Hutterites and um, <clears throat> Mennonites and stuff like that. <coughs> um, they were being discriminated. If you came to Canada, there's no discrimination. I like that you moved that and put it right in front of the <laughs> It would have been better if you just put it on his desk here. Sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> it's in the way, but not. Um, so you're gonna be you're gonna be discriminated based on your religion. Come to Canada, start farming, and we're not gonna care what you do. Okay. I'm kind of Albertan in that sense. I don't care. That comes from being raised, born and raised in Alberta. Oh, but I'm this. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, but I'm a Mennonite. Uh, who, who cares? Are you a farmer? Yes, go farm. Just go farm. Okay? It, that's where this whole idea came from and the, this, this open west concept where we don't care what you are. Um, we talked about John Ware. Have we talked about him? <clears throat> John Ware was a black cowboy. He was a slave in Arkansas, moved to Texas, became very, very, very good at uh, raising cattle. Okay? Because he was black, he was always a second-class citizen. So he went up to Montana, and there was they actually moved cattle from Texas all the way up to Alberta, and they would just take thousands of cattle and horses, and they would just ride along with them and make sure the cows didn't get lost. Okay? So they would push them all the way through and then make sure they didn't get killed and all that, and then they would drop them off in Alberta if somebody would buy them. And then they would either go back or come uh, and do it again, but John Ware stayed. John Ware was like 6'3", six, 6'5", six, huge, huge man. I'm 6'1", so two inches on me, maybe four, <clears throat> okay? So huge man, 240 pounds, back in the day where every, like I would have been a giant, okay? Five, nine cowboys were like big, strong cowboys, and this guy's 6'3", okay? Massive, would not get bucked off a horse. So. There's a whole bunch of free horses. You would catch them, you would rope them, and then they would buck and buck and buck and buck and buck and until somebody would ride them long enough that they would just stop bucking and you could start to train them. 
but you have to break a horse. That's what it's called. It's called breaking. So John Ware would jump on this horse, and he would never, he's never ever been kicked off a horse. He's so much so, this horse was jumping and bucking and, and rearing and okay, and it got close to the edge of a, like a 20, 25 foot cliff that fell into water. Okay, there was a river below, and he held onto the horse, and the horse jumped off the cliff, landed in the water. John Ware, they, everybody kind of runs over, and they're like, oh my god, John Ware's dead! So they run over, they look down, and John Ware rides the horse out of the water, and the horse is finally like, eh, if you're going to do that, I'll be okay with you riding me. Okay, John Ware is incredible. It's a great, great, great story. He's then He then started a, a house up in just outside of Red Deer, actually. Okay, there's a school named after him, but those are the people that came to Canada because he, you're free, you're free and you're respected here. There's no um, stuff like that. Um, a lot of people's wife died of pneumonia, but I think so. Yeah, he's he's a really cool cowboy, like one of the best, or one of the best Alberta cowboys. Um, especially because he was a black guy. He was the first black guy. So he's kind of breaking down discrimination walls. Like he would go into town and they're like, yeah, but black people like this, not John, he's different. But as soon as you have that person that's different, that's okay. It starts to break down those, those barriers, right? Okay. <laughs> 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 um, it talks more about Francophones in the West. Okay, so Francophones in the West, because if you move to the West, <laughs> ridiculous, Kay. If you move to the West um, and everybody else is speaking English and your little town speaks French, do you think you're going to continue to speak French? Yes. Probably not, okay? So they started t uh, radio programs, they started newspapers, they started towns, they started all these different things that were French speaking, okay? And this is actually, it goes back to when Alberta and uh, Saskatchewan split. There were so many French people here that we have French schools here. We have Catholic schools in our charter, in Alberta charter, because of those French people before. So we go to Catholic schools today because of the French 150 years ago. Okay? So you guys go to this school and you don't have to pay through the nose for it because of what the French did back in the 1880s. Um, so the, I, I would say their, their, uh, their mark is pretty big. You guys know what a migrant is? Migrant is somebody that moves. So an internal migrant is somebody moves from the internal, right? From Canada to Canada. So from Ontario to, on, to Alberta or from BC to Alberta or whatever, okay? <clears throat> Those are internal migrants. There were a lot of internal migrants in Canada because we wanted to settle, settle the West. There were a lot of French migrants as well, okay? Um, they came from Fran Belgium and France as well. One of the... Uh, uh, Trochu, there were half a million. Between 1860 and 1900, half a million Canadians from Quebec had moved south to New England um, because they're just, they're kind of done with it. They're, they're moving away, okay? Um, they're trying to lure, lure them west, but it's hard to do because they don't believe that Canada stands for them. So they're just kind of leaving for better, better places. Okay. Um, that's starting to be what, what's going on with the French. Okay. They, they gain their identity and then they lose it and then they gain them and then they lose it. But they're always, they always have to fight for it. And that's why when you see it today and we pay so much money to Quebec and to the French, it's because they're, their identity will be quickly lost if we don't protect it, okay? Pluralistic society, I assume you guys know what, or you guys are starting to put together how this would work. If a whole bunch of Ukrainians came to town, they're not going to, just like the Filipinos in this school, the Filipinos kind of hang out together, yes? Yeah. Okay? <laughs> There's a couple people's eyes that are huge right now, like, oh my God, yes, okay? So, the Filipinos hang out together because they have similar customs. They have similar. They can talk the same religion. They when when they're complaining about their mom, it's they're like, oh my god, no, I get it. No, yeah, no. We have. You mentioned a food item, and they're like, oh, it's so good. Where you don't have to explain all that. It's just nice to have something normal, okay, and something familiar. So when Ukrainians came to this province, 
they started to settle in Ukrainian towns. When Polish people came, they started to settle in their Polish towns. British, French, German, Scandinavian, Aboriginal, Jewish, Ukrainian, Dutch, Italian, Russian, Asian, Polish, and others. Okay, There are a ton of them. Look at the Ukrainians. From zero to 75,000 in 30 years. Okay? Scandinavian. <laughs> Worst song ever. Starts at 5,000 at 112,000 after that. That's where you get your blonde and your blue eyes from. Yeah? You're Frenchy. <laughs> oh, Disney. Thanks for your... <laughs> okay. In the West, um, a lot started to change because of the machinery. Um, if you don't have to use an ox and you can instead use a tractor, things will probably go a little faster. Your tractor will never ever tell you that it doesn't want to go somewhere. Okay? An ox will. An ox will go wherever it wants. It's bigger than you. So if it wants to go this way, you have to really beat it to convince it to stay straight in a straight line. If it's happy to stay in a straight line, there's no problem, man. If a donkey doesn't want to move, good luck. Donkeys are stubborn. If they decide something, it's finished, man. So it's way better if you have a tractor and you're like, no, we're just going to drive instead of trying to convince this animal to go, to go somewhere. Yeah? An, an ox. An ox is like a big cow. Yeah, it's like a working cow. Okay, it's bigger. Okay. Um, talks about wheat. Talks about exports. What would have helped exports? The railway. That's the answer I'm kind of looking for there. Okay, the railway would have really, really, really helped everything because it would have brought people out. Would have helped them ship it back. The railway was really, really big. Okay. Any questions?